Good evening. We're going to be led in the pledge by Miss Green. Roll call, please. Ms. Bollet. Here. Mr. Borgarelli. Here. Mr. Dure. Here. Ms. Green. Here. Mr. Howard. Here. Mr. Lamar. Here. Mr. Levenstein. Here. Ms. Paletti. Here. Mr. Schradeyer. Here. We're going to start with the public hearing 2023-24 District Safety Plan. Mr. Tindall. Thank you, Mr. President, board members, superintendent, senior staff, I appreciate it. Uh, as soon as we get the slides up, we'll run through. Uh, no? I've just been notified that the district is having some internet connectivity issues and they're working on it. We're going to go into executive session and give them a chance to get the uh, technological problems figured out. So we will be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby recesses into executive session for the following purpose, matter which make it rise to the discipline of particular pedagogical employee, Con New LLC versus Town of Newburgh and NECSD, Chadwick Gardens Association LLC versus the City of Newburgh and NECSD, 
collective bargaining under Taylor Law, NTA, NSAA, CSEA. Discussion regarding current litigation, Bond versus NECSD, index number 21CV05623. Uh, SB versus NECSD index number EF007920-2019. And AK versus NECSD index number EF001273-2020 and to obtain advice from legal counsel. Can I have a motion and a second? Second. Roll call. Mr. Borgarelli? Yes. Mr. Duray? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mrs. Trade Iron? Yes. Ms. Bolay? Yes. We'll be back in approximately one hour. We're going to have the public hearing on the 2023-24 district safety plan followed by the agenda and non-agenda items speaking. All right, let's try this again. Thank you, Mr. President, board members, superintendent, senior staff. Uh, I am Matthew Tindall. I'm the director of safety and security here for the Newburgh School District. This is my what, fifth school year rolling into this, so uh, real excited. Uh, sorry about the presentation, um, but I'm going to go off the top of my head and answer any questions you have. So our district-wide safety plan for this year um, is written into the SAVE legislation. So the SAVE legislation governs what needs to be in our uh, safety plan and all the measures. So it has some of the components uh, cover risk reduction strategies, training, implementation, hazard identification, responses to violence, and our emergency response protocols. So our, our plans are very basic at the district level. Our buildings have a very uh, more comprehensive plan and specific to each building. So in those uh, are, I believe we're at 30, up to 37 pages now in our 37 page document where, you know, we've really built it out over the last few years. A lot of those uh, components have been added. Uh, we, in 2020, we added a uh, communicable disease protocol from Governor Cuomo that governed social distancing and measures we would take if we ever had another emergency uh, health response. This past year, we had to add our emergency remote instruction plan. Now, this, this wasn't something that we're required to have as in we are going to practice this. This was a just in case. It, it was taken in from all the feedback from remote and digital learning over the years. And what they really just wanted said, if we, if we have to do it, you guys need to know how to do it and put it in writing. So that's what we added this year. That's our big change. Um, we still have our school safety deputies and our contract that we're very thankful for with the Orange County Sheriff's Office and our partnership there. So we're still continuing with our school safety deputies. That contract runs to the end of 2024. Um, other than that, those that's our big change. Our Emergency response drills have not changed. We're required to do 12 emergency response drills annually. Four of those are lockdown. Eight of those are evacuation or more commonly known as fire drills. Um, other than that, um, that's, that's off the top of my head. Any member of the public uh, have any comments or questions? Does he have to stand up and... Thank you. Ray Harvey, um, how many, how many um, administrators or teachers is certified to use a defibrillator? And, and how many is, is uh, trained for first aid? Because if, if you've been watching, we've been having a lot of young folks, especially athletes, collapsing. And, 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 and it's very important to be able to respond. Um, so. 
I won't be able to answer for administration, but I can tell you that 100% of my staff are. We actually had two CPR saves in the last two years from the security department, so I am proud to say that. Dr. Farrell? Yeah. Um, obviously, all of our nursing staff is trained, as well as our physical education teachers and all of our coaches and assistant coaches. Any more questions from the public? Oh, Ms. Green. Do teachers get trained? At, well, once again, I'm coming from Yonkers. Every year, um, we had to take that CPR course. So does Newburgh do the same thing to require teachers? Even if it's not every year, every two years, uh, is it required that teachers also take the um, course to help, you know, to revive all that stuff? Um, it's not required. However, last year, um, in conjunction with Exceptional Learners and Mr. Bear's office um, for our uh, social emotional learners, mm -hmm. we provided CPR training, uh, the overview at all of our schools, and we also provided our staff with the opportunity to take the full CPR course okay. if they chose to do so. It is our intention to do that again this year so that all of our staff members and hopefully more of them than last year will also participate. Okay. Thank you. And just to add to that, we have two nurses on staff who are, uh, tra are trained to be the trainers. So we can actually do that in-house and we do that on an annual basis for the staff that we've just described. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, do we have to close the public hearing at this point? Uh, close the public hearing on this? Thank you. Going to the public comment on agenda items. I don't have anybody signed up for agenda items. Would anybody like to speak? Would anybody like to speak on agenda items? On agenda items. Agenda items are first. Yes. If there's nobody speaking on agenda items, we're going to go to the list for non-agenda items. Ms. Megan Tantono. Uh, Dawn Fuchek. There we go. Thank you. Dawn Fuchek, for those of you that don't know me, um, I am a former school board member, a former board officer for this district, and I also um, do work as an adjunct facilitator uh, doing leadership development trainings for um, different school boards across New York State. So um, I came here to speak to all of you tonight about a few things. I've been um, watching your meetings for the last several months at home. And um, I've been a little concerned about a few things and things that I've seen. Um, some of these things were a board meeting where there was such confusion around an item on the agenda that ultimately you ended up with no legal representation and you didn't even realize um, how that had happened. Um, the ongoing practice of board members leaving the board table and coming up to the podium and speaking as community members, um, that is not a best practice across the state for school board members. Um, board members uh, over the course of the past year consistently leaving meetings early, um, that is not fulfilling your, your duties and um, the oath of office that you took. And, in this particular time where every vote of this board seems to be a vote of contention, I would say that that would be problematic if that continues to happen. Um, a current board member, uh, this has been spoken about before with an ongoing multi-million dollar lawsuit against the district. I'm not understanding how this is not a conflict of interest. This district has had a former board member um, that had to resign from her position because her husband owned a business that did um, 
business with the district, and so inadvertently she then was benefiting monetarily from that. Um, in this situation, I don't see where there's a difference. There's a potential settlement here. Um, this person would then monetarily benefit. How is that not the same as the previous mentioned conflict of interest? In addition to that, um, the district's attorney and thereby the board's attorney is the one representing the district against such lawsuit. While it may technically not be illegal, it certainly seems to fall under the unethical and appears to be a clear conflict of interest. I've been asking myself, why, why is this board currently so dysfunctional? Um, you currently have no agreed upon goals that I hope we will hear in the future in public to be discussed, as that's an item that should be done in public. Um, you currently have no committee assignments as a result of the initial committee assignments being rescinded at your board meeting. Um, and I ask when those committee assignments were first done, was there any consideration given to whether or not the committee represented and reflected the knowledge of the people assigned to that committee, their experience on the board, or the diversity that these committees should and have needed? I hope that when looking at that in the future and reassigning the committees and also looking at the amount of time that would be required for these individuals as certain individuals had six or seven committees assigned to them. And I don't think that's fair or respectful of your individual times as well. The attempt to dismantle district policies that address the needs and best interests of our most vulnerable students. How can policies be brought forward in such a diverse school district that clearly negatively impact children of color? It's been about 20 years since I was initially elected as a board member to this school board. Why in 2023 are we still having these same conversations? I'm just not understanding this. The use of social media to incite the public and spread misconceptions that are never corrected? Who does this benefit? As board members, you're supposed to be leaders and ambassadors of students and of this community. You were elected to be their voice. As a board member, you're held to a higher standard. You're elected officials and are expected to exemplify a certain level of professional decorum. You don't have to like each other, but you do need to get along and work together to carry out your duties as board members. That's five minutes, Ms. Fuji. Okay. I'll Thank be happy you. to come back. Thank you so much. Mr. Ray Harvey. Oh, getting old, getting old, man, getting old. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. President, Superintendent. Um, rest of the board members and distinguished guests, and it's, it's it's a lot of things that is going on. I I, I, I like what uh, the young lady just just spoke about, uh, but the things that I want to speak about is the school district just had a book bag drive, pa backpack, okay, <laughs> backpack drive. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, so, and it was a great turnout. Um, I happened to bump in some people that was Mrs. Peterson. That was, we happened to meet at the, the diner, and she asked me to come over, and, and I was more than willing to come over and help do that. I, I say that to say this. That Saturday that that event happened, if you missed it, you missed the community because the community was here. For everyone that was here saw that. They turned out, right? I mean, it was the line. It was from this door all the way down to the right. It was, it was amazing. And, and to, see, to see the community interact with the board members and the, and, and the, and the administrative people that was here, because they got a chance to talk to um, some of the folks. And I know some of the board members, because see, I, I, I do my work. 
had legitimate reason not to be here. But this is important. When, when stuff like this happened, if you telling me that you are here for my community and not showing up to community, because you see, I talk about this every time I get up to the mic because it's so important for kids to see you and their elements, not in yours and theirs, so that they know that you really care about them and they can get to talk to you and the parents can talk to you. And, 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 and try to explain to you what you're doing, whether they agree with it or not agree with it. Because a lot of people ain't going to come to these meetings. But when you're out in the community, they will talk to you, right? And they will express, you know, you might not like what you hear, right? Because they're going to let you have it. I can guarantee you that. And anybody that's been to these community events will tell you that. Right? They, they don't agree with some of the things I say. But that, that's what this is about. That everybody input is into this decision making. Especially the students. Because we was talking about changing some policies and I, and I would like to know how many students voices was heard for them policies. I really would like to know that. Because it's important. Because them the ones that we are affecting, right? And what they think of that, right? Because they are our future, right? So show up. Show up. Show up to these events because it's very important events that the school. And it was a great time. And then we had people who was on social media talking junk about the school district. And then they show up to the event. I don't know what's going on with that because it was a great event. I'm telling you, I was here. It was a great event. I, I was just amazed to stand out there and just just stand back and watch what was going on at this event at every level, right? And and this, and, the, and the kids being involved, and, and the parents being involved, the staff that was here involved. It was a great event. It's another thing that is that is in the community. That I don't know how true it is, but. A word was spoken to my superintendent, to our superintendent, that was inappropriate. And that's in your heart. If you, what, what you speak come from your heart, and I truly believe that, right? And as, as educated people, we should know what we are saying and what that means, right? I just, we were just down at a, at a, at a news conference today about... Um, people attacking my Jewish brothers and sisters. We're not going to stand for that. And we're not going to stand for board members who speak to, to our superintendent of color in a way that the black community knows what that means. We're not going to tolerate that from nobody. I don't care who you are. We're not going to tolerate that as a community, Right? Because it's important. You, 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 was, you were supposed to go on this, this retreat. That was your time to really learn, to get to know one another. It's five minutes, Mr. Harvey. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bennett Weiss. Hello, it's, it's been a while since I've been here, and I noticed quite a few changes, um, some quite pleasing and others are not so. Um, among the not so was being frisked to come in here. I said, well, what happened? We never used to be frisked. I mean, it's kind of a sad commentary that you would think that that's warranted. And if it's not warranted, I guess it's a little less sad, but still weird. But at any rate, um, I couldn't help but notice that as soon as I walked in the door. The other thing I notice is we have a, a new president. Congratulations, Mr. President. Poetic justice comes to mind. Um, and I think there's also been some injustices that I've observed when I've watched in, in preparation for this. I watched several hours of your tapes of previous meetings. And uh, I, I was quite shocked at um, this a statement in this argument that was made by the very first speaker here tonight regarding a conflict about a suing of the district and at the same time serving on the board. 
And I remember one board's member tried to distinguish between moral and legal um, righteousness. And uh, to me, this it seems so black and white. It's either legal or it's not. If it's illegal, that's one thing. Moral, you got to be kidding. I mean, it, it, to me, it seems perfectly consistent that somebody who is suing the district because he recognized a wrong that happened to apply particularly to him would also want to get on the board because he's interested enough in changing it to see that that doesn't happen again so long as there's no conflict of interest in a vote or manipulation or uh, proper um, uh, you know, excusing yourself from votes when necessary seems appropriate, but th that whole thing is kind of upsetting to me, and I see it as a pattern of um, uh, kind of uh, the only thing I could think of is a whole bunch of white blood cells attacking a foreign body, at least someone that they witness as a foreign body in the district, and, and, it, and it, it stinks. It's not very becoming to hear people giving personal insults to uh, someone who was uh, elected. And um, just briefly on elections, I mean, the, the, these elections were always farcical, and now they've become, I mean, just off the charts ludicrous. I mean, there's nobody voting. You know that. They, 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 they're not real elections. It's, can, I, can I say B-U-L-L-S-H? No, I can't say it. All right, so they're bull the dash, okay? It's, it's just ridiculous what's going on here. And uh, I think it's in part uh, because <clears throat> uh, there's no longer any effort on the part of the district to encourage voter turnout. There never really was. In fact, I could think it would be easier to argue that suppression of voter turnout is uh, in play here. But at least there was some pushback. When I was uh, active in the school about 20 years ago, I was on a committee. We insisted on debates. And we filled up auditoriums. We filled up the science room at the uh, um, high school uh, for, for our debates. Uh, and they were, because they were always independent. They weren't a group that's endorsing one of the candidates, is holding a debate and all that other nonsense. Just School, it's the school itself should be promoting interest in these things so that we have a school board that is reflective of the community and not of small power groups within it. It's, it's ridiculous. But I, 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 that's what, I, what I really wanted to talk about today was um, something that I, uh, the school assignments, how kids are assigned to school. So my Knowledge is a little bit outdated, so I tried my best to update my knowledge on exactly what the mechanics of the lottery system are. I couldn't find the information. I started last week. I called the registration office. That seemed logical. I left three messages with Dr. So-and-so. We have a lot of doctors here in this district. It's a healthy district. Uh, I forget her name. Uh, I left three messages. I didn't get any calls back. I, 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 so I said, let me try something else. I called the clerk and I explained that I'm not getting any calls back. Is there someone who could help explain to me the, the algorithm of the lottery, how it works, the nuts and bolts of it? Well, uh, there's two other numbers you could call at the um, uh, registration office. So I tried one of those numbers and I got through to someone who was very, very helpful. In fact, not only helpful, but she understood exactly what I was getting at and she started relating to me a story I've heard a million times about how she grew up right across the street from a school, but a kid had to go, I knew, I've heard this story a zillion times. Uh, but anyway, but she, she, she was somewhat helpful. And when I, Weiss, she, she said the place to find out this poll, uh, how much minutes. time we got? Oh, I, I didn't know you didn't tell me. Oh, anyway, listen, man, you, good, good luck to you guys. Uh, uh, diversity um, stuff here, that committee should be disbanded. It's a waste of time. You, this, district, this, this district has spent 25 years Thank you, with Mr. the magnet West. system. And this is what you come up with and you're still working on this crap? Shame on the lot of you. Goodbye. Would anybody else like to speak on non-agenda items? If not, we will move on to the agenda. Superintendent update. Dr. Manning Campbell.
Thank you. Good evening and thank you to those of you who have taken time to engage in our community in this meaningful way. As we look toward a new school year, I would like to highlight ways in which professionals throughout our district are preparing for the first day of school. We are eager to unveil two major capital improvement projects that are nearing completion through our capital bond project that was approved by voters in our community. Valesgate School's addition of classroom and learning spaces as well as the addition to Heritage Middle School's cafeteria are nearly complete and will be ready by the start of the school year. And I'll ad lib to say we were there today and it is absolutely beautiful. We cannot wait for the students to see the new spaces, especially the um, cafeteria. Thank you, Mr. Devine. Thanks for being here. This afternoon, members of my team and I toured both buildings. Where the, while there is still work to be done, we have been assured it will be completed by the first day of school. In visiting these schools, we spoke with administrators, custodial staff, and cafeteria workers, all expressed being in good spirits and were pleased to see incremental progress throughout the entire summer. We are thankful to the work of the professionals in our district for their coordination of the work that is completed to an acceptable standard for our educators and children. Our students and educators will be welcomed back to environments that are safe and welcoming for learning to flourish. On August 19th, Mr. Harvey alluded to this, our family and community engagement team held their annual school to school backpack event. Over 1,200 families and students received backpacks and school supplies furnished by NECSD's City of Newburgh. Mr. Harvey, we'd like to personally thank you for not only being there on Saturday, but helping us to pack those backpacks on the Friday evening before with our FACE team. Thank you very much for your support. There have been some concerns brought to my attention by some Board of Education members about various items. Unfortunately, these messages are often vague and unfounded. I would like to remind our district commun community to communicate concerns with me directly as the educational leader for the district so they can be addressed appropriately and in a timely manner. As the new school year approaches, we continue to remain focused on our purpose and those we serve. Every goal back, every day. This concludes my update for this evening. Thank you. Um, I present item 6.2 for your consideration. Is there going to be a presentation on this item? We, we can speak to this. Um, this is the district comprehensive improvement plan. I apologize without uh, the technology. Um, again, I'm going to try and do it from memory. Um, so the District Comprehensive Improvement Plan is a one-year plan based on an analysis of the schools that are identified as ATSI and CSI. We have three schools that the New York State Education Department would like us to work with to improve outcomes for students in those three schools. Those three schools are Bombville, Gidney Avenue, and South Middle School. Based on the analysis of the work that the teams in those schools have identified, We've created a district comprehensive improvement plan that says that demonstrates how we as a school district will support those schools to do what they need to do in addition to addressing some district wide work that needs to be done. So in the event that you had some time to take a look at the district comprehensive improvement plan, you'll see that there's a 100 percent alignment to the district strategic plan because the district strategic plan was done with a large stakeholder group representative of our community um, and went sp spanned over a three-day period using multiple sources of data to identify specific areas that were preventing our students from being successful. We then drilled down to find out what the whys were within that data and we identified student-centered instruction, uh, some uh, work we need to do with our adults and our professionals, some work to do around safety and security, and then some work around attendance. So those were the kind of four pillars we started to take a look at. When you look at what we're doing 
in the district comprehensive improvement plan. It's a real target on our subpopulations. Uh, really taking a look at our economically disadvantaged population because we found that to be one population where multiple uh, race ethnicities fit into. So we've never really done a, a strong focus on poverty within the district. So we're beginning to look at what research says we should be doing. So we've identified training for our, some of our faculty to engage in and then they will become certified trainers to go out and do some supports in the schools to address lesson planning and classroom instruction. I, if there are other things that I missed, I apologize. Um, I don't, again, have that plan in front of me. I, um, do you have any questions on this item? Ms. I have a, 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 a question. Um, upon looking at the um, plan, I didn't see where there was a component for literacy. We, we have a real issue with literacy in this district. There are a lot of students that are not reading and um, I read an article in New York Times um, early this month and they listed New Rochelle and Newburg as two of the worst districts out of the 600 plus districts in New York and, and that struck something in my heart mm -hmm. that Newburg was stated something negative about reading. So I'm just questioning. I'm, I'm not sure. saying that I disagree with this plan, but I don't see anything in there where it is focused on literacy and so, we need to have a yeah. component solely for literacy because we have an issue with reading in this district. Yeah. You know, and, and, and then there's the controversy about the reading program that's used. I mean, it's just a lot of stuff. So sure. we need something that is focusing on literacy because so what, our students are not reading. Thank you, Ms. Green. So when we took a look at creating this plan, we had to balance out the plan with what is, what's the core program and what are the resources that we have that we're applying to uh, improved outcomes for our students. And I'm not saying that our reading program is perfect, um, but I believe through the implementation of our reading program with Fidelity and then supplementing in each school the individual resources that those unique students have and need within that program, and addressing those particular needs, that's something our curriculum and instruction division is already working on. So this is an improvement plan to address additional gaps that we have in supporting our students. So I'm not saying we're perfect with literacy, but I'm saying our curriculum and instruction team has worked very hard to create a reading program and to locate specific resources to fill gaps that have been identified. Uh, so you may not see literacy defined in the plan, but when you see that we're addressing uh, integrated co-teaching, the way two teachers work in a classroom together to service all of the students in there, the way they do small group instruction, the way they use data to inform their instruction, it may not say literacy, but by focusing on those things, you'll have an impact on literacy. <clears throat> Ms. Boulay, then Mr. Howard. Thank you. It's the Board of Education's responsibility to determine the district's vision and goals. This plan tonight, along with the strategic plan, which is a few resolutions forward, was created by 72 people selected by the superintendent and the deputy superintendent. It targets attendance, which has been targeted since COVID. Exhaustive efforts have been made to get kids back into schools. Attendance rates are a symptom of something else. We have to dig deeper, in my opinion, to analyze why kids are not in school. Could it be that they're afraid to be here? Are we ensuring their safety when they're inside? Could it be that they're assigned to settings that don't match their IEPs? Could it be that they're assigned to a classroom of not more than 12, but are in a classroom of 30? Could it be that they can't read and write and therefore they can't understand and they are humiliated? Could it be that they've not received their services like speech and AIS and have therefore not progressed? Are they unwilling to work because of all the protections in place to make it nearly impossible to fail? Why aren't we talking about the kids who do attend or the kids who belong in gifted programs that we're supposed to provide for. 72 people chosen to create this master plan and not one of them is a Board of Education member. 
The board has had no input into this plan, yet we are asked tonight to approve it. Why are we not shining a spotlight on, quest on the questions above or talking about chronic absenteeism, which is at 35.9% of all students? 43% of all students with disability are chronically absent. There are different, these are different calculations than the attendance. The chronic absenteeism rate is used by the state in determining our accountability status and should be the data targeted, but no one asked us. I will not rubber stamp what is brought before me. I will not simply trust numbers or a narrative. Our kids deserve better. Thank you. Mr. Howard. Mr. Forge. So let me clarify some of the information that I just heard. Um, the 72 person team was identified through a shared decision making process. Teachers that sat on that particular team were identified by the Newburgh Teachers Association president. The administrators that sat on that team were identified by the Newburgh Schools uh, Administrators Organization and Mr. Prokosh assigned those particular members. The CSCA members were assigned by Mr. Fisher and Mr. Green. Uh, they were not assigned by the deputy, nor were they assigned by the superintendent. The only ones assigned by us were the executive team that also participated in that particular plan. So uh, that's one particular clarification. The other uh, component is exact, I do agree with what Ms. Boulay is saying with attendance. The focus on attendance is a priority that we've identified in this plan. We have to figure out what is the root cause that's preventing our students from achieving that attendance. The district comprehensive improvement plan is developed based on the ESSA indicator, which is chronic absenteeism. So we've got to figure out why do we have a chronic absenteeism rate that is so strong and, and really begin to address it. And that's the purpose of creating an action plan to address attendance. And we've set specific targets in that particular plan that would achieve that particular goal. So I apologize if that didn't come across clear in the plan, but that was our true intention. Ms. Boulay. I just want to say one more time, not one board member. I have a I have a question. On the list of the people that were part of the, the team, the group, I believe the timing of the meetings that you had was during work hours, and you didn't have it after work hours, so that parents who worked could be part of this decision-making process. In the future, if you could have multiple meetings with after school where parents who work can be part of the process, that would be helpful. Because I looked through this, so, this, yeah. le this meeting, and this, this list, and I think there were only three community members on this list, and one was actually a professor at Mount St. Mary's, and they are affiliated with the district because we do have some kind of a partnership there. So everyone else is either an employee of the district or somehow related to the district. So. I disagree with that and I apologize if that didn't come across either. We had representatives from the Newburgh Armory, we had representatives from uh, the Orange County um, agencies, we had partnerships from community-based organizations, we had individuals that represented the community there. Yeah. Um, but I also, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I said other than people that are affiliated with the district, the Armory is affiliated with the district. Right. I mean, so, People that work, their, their parents, that sure. were not part of the process. In the future, if you could include them or have a we, meeting so, after hours. So thank you for bringing that up because I, I neglected to share that we also did surveys mm -hmm. uh, and we had a large population that responded to those surveys. So individuals that could not participate in person during those three full days of, of causal analysis had an opportunity to respond through the surveys. We also took into consideration, I think Mr. Bergarelli had mentioned this earlier uh, in another conversation, that it's really critical that we get the student voice in, involved and in communicated to this. We did focus groups of students throughout the district to incorporate how our students feel about our district and what they believe they want to do. Um, so 
the, the other component that I must say is that this, this plan was developed under the leadership of the previous board. The previous board asked us to go and conduct this without their involvement, but to update them from <coughs> meet each of the meetings to understand the direction and the learnings that we had from each of the sessions, and then to present to them a plan at the end of the, the events. That is what this administration did. We followed through with what the board that was under that particular leadership uh, asked us to do. So that's why there was no member of the team on the district strategic planning team. Ms. Mineo's name is on the list, but it just says absent. So she was to be there, but she wasn't there. Because right. she decided that it was not appropriate for one person of the Board of Education to be a representative participating in those sessions and she was uh, the individual that we communicated with with the information that reached out and we kept the rest of the board informed as to the progress we were making. That is the yeah, way the we were asked to do it. Mr. Howard. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Any other questions? Mr. Lamar. This may have been asked already, but how many parents were on the team of 72? I again don't have it in front of me, um, but I can get you that information and the, the sign-in sheet should be included in the plan that was given to you. Do you have any more questions, Mr. Lamar? Okay. I do have a question about um, the, if we're shooting for increased attendance, um, both with the students and, um, and faculty. I am concerned um, and have been since the pandemic uh, about the fact that we haven't, still haven't made any changes in terms of in, improving the, the air quality in the schools. Um, I don't even believe we are using the MERV 13 anymore because I think the word from facilities was that they can't handle them, uh, the, the systems don't, I, that's what I, that was the word that I got from somewhere. Thank you. But um, I, I just think that if the health of the people in the buildings isn't top priority, then attendance is going to be a tricky, uh, tricky game to play. Yeah, Mr. Strader, and so I just need clarification. Are we talking about the district comprehensive improvement plan or the strategic plan? Because I think we're on the district comprehensive improvement plan. Yeah, there, <laughs> yeah, he just came back from the emergency, so maybe he's on the wrong list of questions. Thank you. They are connected, but. All right, so um, we, any other questions? If not, we have a motion and a second. So moved. Roll call, please. Ms. Bullay? No. Mr. Borgarelli? Yes. Mr. Dure? Yes. Ms. Green? No. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lamar? No. Ms. Folletti? Yes. Mrs. Strayer? No. It passed. Okay. Item 6.3, please. I'm sorry. So 6.3 is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute the 2023-24 um, SCP plan for South Middle School and for Gidney Avenue Memorial School. Can I have a motion and a second on this item? Second. Any questions on this item? Ms. Green. Is this for the schools that are considered need help, like TSI and stuff? Because I, I didn't see um, Bombville in there. Well, the two schools that you're speaking of right now are CSI schools. Bombville will be the next resolution, which is an ATSI school, separate. Oh, uh, okay. The, oh okay, thank you. These particular schools are reviewed, their plans are reviewed by the State Education Department and approved by the State Education Department and then presented to the board for consideration. Okay, thank you. Mr. Howard. Yeah, thank you. So. As we give these reports, we, we've mentioned this in the past, but 
can we use the words instead of the acronyms? Because we got people in the audience that may not understand what CSI, TSI, and I think it's important to use the words instead of the acronyms. Any other questions on this item? And roll call, please. Mr. DeRay? Yes. Ms. Green? No. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mrs. Strayiron? Yes. Ms. Belay? Yes. Mr. Borgarelli? Yes. Thank you. Item 6.4, resolution to authorize the Board of Education to execute a 2023 school comprehensive education plan. This is for Bombville School. Can I have a motion and a second, please? Second. Any questions, Mr. Lamar? I just want to confirm from some notes that were in the and that we that we saw in the agenda. Are we approving this as is, or is this something that may be changing? At this particular time, uh, you are approving what is written in that particular plan. Um, as it is written, uh, the superintendent and I uh, met with the building principal and assistant principal today to review the plan. Uh, please be reminded, these are working documents. These get adjusted daily um, and reviewed and, and, and edited at that particular time. Um, so the way it's written right now is what we're asking you to consider. The, question, the questions that were asked that, that all of your questions have been answered, I guess, was because I'm trying not to talk about, I don't know what the notes. All questions that we had have been responded to. Okay. Ms. Okay, I have a, a question. I thought that um, it was just going to be as is, but you just said that you will, pres after it's voted on, you will present it to the principals and assistant principals and adjustments can be made. I, I want to know what I, what I heard. What I said was today we met with the principal and assistant principal and they presented the plan to us this afternoon at 12 o'clock. From, from, um, from Bonville. Bonville? We met with the principal and the assistant principal from Bonville at mm -hmm. noon today and they presented the plan to us is okay. what I said. Oh, okay. So the district comprehensive plan is going to stay the way it is no, with no adjustments because I thought I heard you say that the school comprehensive education plan I, for bomb no the district no the district comprehension improvement plan you said that you okay I'm getting confused here it's okay we're on the bombville SEP plan right no I'm I know we're on bombville but I voted no for the last one because I wanted the district comprehensive improvement plan to include a component about literacy, but you're saying that after we, if once we vote on it, that it can kind of be adjusted. Sure. Okay. See, if it can be adjusted, then I would like to change my vote because I thought it was that this was the way it was going to be. Period. That it cannot be adjusted. Well, point of order. We're that was six point um, three because I said no for Gitney see. Avenue and yeah. South Middle. Yeah, 6.3 was for the Gidney Avenue School. Right, and, but I said no. I would South. like to change it to yes now that I have other information. I said no. It passed. Oh, it passed. Yeah. Okay. That one passed. I'm yeah. sorry. It passed. Okay, all right. So right now we are on 6.4, and Ms. Boulay has a question. I just want to be clear. Once the SEP plan is, is approved by the state, there are no changes to it, correct? So yes. what we are going to vote on for Bombville is done. That's the SEP plan without any future revisions, correct? So let me point one piece of clarification. The SEP plan for Bonville is not approved by the State Education Department. It is approved by the board and the superintendent of schools. So it's subject to future edits. Any comprehensive improvement plan for a school should be flexible enough to be adjusted based on the data that's collected as you implement the plan. So as you're implementing the plan and you're seeing growth or you're not seeing growth, the school leadership right. team should have the opportunity to make recommendations to get that plan back on, on course. So yes, there is an opportunity for the school leadership team to adjust their plans. It's a working document. That's how school improvement works. Thank you. So it's the school leadership team. Thank you. Any more questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. 
Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Mike's time, guys. Mike's time. They have no audio. Thank you. Ms. Yes. Paletti? Yes. Mrs. Trade Iron? Yes. Ms. Bollet? Yes. Mr. Borgarelli? Yes. Mr. Jure? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. I'd like to add an item to the agenda. We have 6.5. Oh, we're up to 6.5 resolution. Oh. Sorry. Sorry about that. Resolution to approve the 2023-2026 strategic plan. Can I have a motion and a second? Second. Second. Any questions on this item? Ms. Boulay. Make sure we're voting separately on each of these. So the strategic plan is one vote and the every gold back everyday scorecard is a second vote or are they together as one vote? I apologize, they are one vote. The strategic plan is the strategic plan of focus. The scorecard is how we will monitor and implement and measure the impact of what we're doing in alignment to that strategic plan. So you have a strategic plan that says you're gonna, we're gonna focus on this and do this. The scorecard is, this is how we know whether we're making a difference or not. They go together. Ms. Boulay. So I already spoke about the, about the plan itself. I have questions about the scorecard. So I'm assuming that the NTA has checked this document to ensure that there aren't any contract violations like, um, you know, our teacher's gonna be given a worksheet ahead of time when the walkthroughs happen through their classrooms, will, be, they, will they be given what it is that will be looked at? while they're in there. Um, will the results of these walkthroughs have anything to do with APPR? Will it influence it? Will the teacher's names be attached to these review evaluations? Will they be put in teach, you know, so questions like that. Has the NTA gone through this and looked at it? Um, the next one is, is, is on that tracking teacher attendance. I have a question about when you're tracking teacher attendance, is FMLA included in there or not included in there? So if, for example, the teacher has a, a car accident and needs to be out for four or five months or a teacher has cancer, those things that can happen, are those excluded from that attendance data or are they included? So those are the, the first two. I have like a, just a few more after that. I don't know if you want me to keep going or answer one at a time, whatever you prefer. I was hoping to hear something about students. I heard a lot about teachers and I was hoping that you would bring some sort of um, conversation about how this impacts students, but all, I'm here, all I've heard was about the NTRU. Does any of your questions have anything to do with student growth? All of my questions are valid, ma'am. Okay, I'm not answering, so. Okay, then I'll finish my questions for the public. On the referrals and suspensions, on the numbers that you have listed there, there's only 18 referrals that are listed for all of the high schools. I don't believe that that number is correct. How are you gonna reduce the suspensions and the removals? The SAVE legislation cannot be tweaked. The law is the law. So if that can't be touched, how are we going to reduce that number? Restorative justice is one way one option that we had through training, but I understand that that restorative training was um, not given over the summer. So again, I ask, even though it won't be answered, are we hitting the right targets? Are we tracking the right things to improve student learning? Thank you. Any further questions on this item? Well, uh, Mr. Lamar. Yeah, since this was where I was at before, um, one question, did anybody advocate for a goal to be in place for literacy? Or There don't seem to be any goals in our goals. There's no targets in our goals. We're just saying we want to do things. But there's no, this doesn't seem like a trackable, you know, a, a, there, there's no room for accountability here. You know, and, and as I said before, I'm concerned about, you know, when it comes to attendance, you know, 
again, if we haven't done our due diligence in trying to reduce health concerns in the buildings, then how are we expecting attendance to get any better? So I believe the scorecard is based on baseline data and target data for the end of the year. Can you give me an example of what you're referring to? What's your microphone? Are we shoot? Are there any goals in here? As I looked at it, and maybe I'm looking at the wrong slide, I don't see any targets. So there's a column called targets that's on the scorecard. Um, the column called target would be the target. The baseline is established by the initial data that we have. There are some targets that have not been set yet, Mr. Lamar. That's because we don't have the, the uh, baseline data available to us in order for us to set the target. Um, the comments that you're making with regards to um, are we taking a look at uh, the health and safety and those particular factors to address faculty and staff and student attendance, that would be an intervention that we would put in place to assure that we meet the target that we set for attendance. Um, so I'm just very confused with what you're asking. Ms. Politi. Yeah, so I have to say that uh, you know, I'm really disappointed with the interrogation of the assistant superintendent and the, and the deputy superintendent on the floor. These are questions that we know could be asked, not on the floor, and, and we also know that they're not able to answer on the floor. So this looks like they're unable to answer or making them look foolish or looking to embarrass them. And this is just creating a further divide between the teachers administration, the community administration, we're here to help. We're here for kids and we're here, you know, as a coach, even when we're in the weeds and, and we're not completely in the weeds here, there are things that can be worked on, but we're never going to highlight the negative over and over and over again. We're here to highlight the positive, to work collaboratively and move forward. And this is just proving the agenda of the other side of the board. And we're gonna sit here all night and ask question after question after question that could be asked in private. Mr. Lamar. I would have happily asked these questions in advance or through emails, but we didn't receive these documents until yesterday. Any other questions? I'm good. Roll call. Mr. Howard. Can I just say, please put the mic on when you are um, yes. off for everyone. Sorry, thank you so much. Um, Mr. Lamar? No. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Poletti? Yes. Mr. Straightiron? No. Ms. Bolay? No. Mr. Borgarelli? Yes. Mr. Jure? Yes. Ms. Green? No. It passed. Now I'm ready to add the item. I'd like to add an item onto the agenda. That's 6.6. Resol resolution to adopt the district-wide safety plan. Can I have a motion and a second to add this item? So moved. So second. Well, it's already here. Point of order. It's, it's already on the agenda? Yeah, it's on the agenda. Yeah. But we added it to second. We yeah. added it less than 24 hours, oh, so we should, okay. we should get it, yeah. Um, so we have a second and a motion. Do you have that written down? Yeah. No, please. Can you please repeat? Thank you. Any questions on this item? Read the resolution. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education of the Newburgh and Large City School District hereby approves the 2023 to 2026 strategic plan. No. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Blame it on technology. Okay. Technology. <laughs> Doing it again. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Howard. Be it resolved, after having conducted a public hearing and having given the public an opportunity to be heard, that the Board of Education hereby adopts a district-wide safety plan of the Newburgh and Large City School District for the 2023 to 2024 school year. So moved. Second. Roll call to add. To add. 
Ms. Boulay? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Mr. Dure? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mr. Stradiron? Yes. Any questions on this item? We need a motion to, that's right. We need a motion and a second to, on the resolution itself. Thank so you, Mr. Howard. Any questions on this item? Ms. Lamar. Yeah, in this document it states that uh, the committee, the district-wide committee will be made up of certain things and one of the ones listed there is a board member. Uh, who was the board member that participated in this process and how were they chosen? This was last year's, but what we can do is we can provide a response in the weekly for you because we don't have it in front of us. And also, how were parent representatives appointed to the building? And who's responsible for following up that every school in our district has the team? And when's that done? Mr. Tyndall provides that, and we have to submit that to the state. All right. And lastly, I was wondering why um, there's a section that has the breakdown of the programs that if we are, if we go remote, the programs that uh, educators will have access to, and there's a number of them that aren't listed there. Uh, like iReady, I think that's our math program now, right? It's not on there, so will they have access to that and be able to teach that remotely or not? Um, and Infinite Campus wasn't listed there either. Uh, we can absolutely add, uh, um, add iReady Classroom. That would be a virtual option, and it's just a pilot. We haven't adopted the program yet. You want to speak to Infinite Campus? Yeah. And it depends on the nature of the emergency, whether or not the student information system will be available. So it depends. Any other questions? All right. Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mrs. Stradiron? Yes. Ms. Belay? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Mr. DeRay? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. That concludes my items. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manning Campbell. Uh, clerk of the board, uh, we have item 7.17.2. Thank you, Mr. President. I have the approval of minutes from the August 15, 2023 regular meeting and August 18, 2023 special meeting. Can I have a motion and a second? So second. Any questions? Roll call. Mrs. Stradion? Yes. Ms. Bollet? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Mr. Duray? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Poletti? Yes. Thank you. That concludes my items. Thank you, Ms. Novotny. Uh, 8.1 President's Update. The board received an email from Ms. Tanika McCullough on August 28th. And it introduced the board to um, a request to have the film, The Right to Read, uh, shared with the community on the school grounds. I believe it's at NFA Auditorium. I would like to have um, this item at the next board meeting on the agenda for approval for, uh, for approval for um, the waiver of the fee of $2,500. And I would like to know if the board would be okay with that being on the next agenda uh, to have that item because it has to be approved by the board to waive a fee. So um, that's something that the, the board had on August 28th, Monday. So um, 
if, if we could have that on the next agenda. And it's possible that there's a, pr there's a process to um, submit for a waiver. I don't know if Ms. McCullough is aware of it, but if someone from the district could help her with that. Thank you so much. I, what I wanted to say was that we began working on this process once we received the information. So we are already in the midst of looking at the facilities and weaving. Um, so that's something that we're working on. So we will do our very, very best to bring it forward at the next meeting, as well as um, Ms. McCullough, you're here. So we wanted to try to weave it. We want we wanted to try to weave it into our presentation um, tomorrow, but we didn't get an opportunity. Just so you know, we've been looking at it ever since you sent it to us. I was away for a couple of days, um, and but I know that we started working on that. So please know that we're working on it. We'll try to bring it for the next meeting, but we will certainly get that done. It was a great film. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item... Uh, 8.2 community committee responses. We have some responses from um, some of the union representatives uh, and one of the community organizations for their represent representation on the, the former committees. Um, since we don't have committees at this time, um, I'm going to submit these names to the superintendent so that she has them on record and that when we do eventually approve committees, that these names could be put on the agenda for immediate approval so that we can hit the ground running with these community groups. Um, at some point, uh, the workshop model uh, presentation from the superintendent will be brought forward to the board and then we'll know what that model what committees are going to be in existence as part of that model. So uh, when that happens, then we'll be able to assign committees for board members and, and figure out what the process is going to be. Yes. So I believe I sent a document identifying um, which committees would be outside of the workshop model. So if you can check your email, unfortunately, we can't pull that up now, but I do believe it was maybe the next day um, so I did send a proposal that we worked on the very, the, I guess it was the last meeting. Um, the next day I sent a proposal including the workshops, the workshop model and the committees that could, would be held outside of it. So please take a look at your email when you I, get a I, chance. I remember seeing that, but I didn't know if it was a final one because there are committees on there that, there, there are some committees that we had that no longer exist as part of your model. Exceptional learners. It's not an existing That's not an existing committee. Well, there's no existing committee now, but the exceptional learners was a committee we had last year. No, it was not. We did not have that last year. Sorry. We didn't in previous years, but not yeah. last year. And it was created for a specific purpose. So your plan is not to have exceptional learners discussed at any level until we get to the board meetings? That's not what I said. What I said was we did not have a committee of exceptional learners last year. We had it in previous years for a reason. That's what I said. Okay. So Thank just, you. Just clarifying. So when that model is approved, then we'll move forward. Mr. Howard. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I, uh, I can appreciate what you've done in regards to trying to make the public a part of our committees, but I think in your ability to be inclusive you've been exclusive and, and I say that to say this you reached out to organizations you re reached out to certain groups but our community is full of taxpayers full of people that may want to participate in committees and if, if I'm correct in hearing you if they weren't a part of the groups that you reached out to then they wouldn't be considered to be on the committees and I think that in trying to be inclusive, that's really being exclusive because I've had people reach out to me and ask when we had the last, when, we, when that conversation came up, well, can I, Mr. Howard, is it possible, can I be on the committee or can I, can I participate in the committee? And we haven't had that conversation as a board, but I think you pick the groups or what about individuals who aren't in groups who want to be part of this process? That would be perfectly fine for me if other people would want to be on, we can have 
an open spot. That, but it's more inclusive now with my proposal than it was before. Okay, but we're but, moving in the right direction. Correct, but what I'm saying is you, you can't include everybody. Because you can't include everybody, no. but everybody should be able to participate as a taxpayer. If well, that's they, they the, do. If the idea, I'm, I have the floor, please. If the idea is inclusion, then say open it up and let's do the advisory model that the deputy superintendent had discussed. Because by just picking particular groups, you're missing more than you're hitting. Can I respond? Go ahead. Yes. Community groups have been asking for this for years. This specific model. I brought it out as a proposal and they were very happy with that. We haven't tried it yet because we have no committees at this point because they were disbanded. We're going to probably go to this workshop model and there's going to be some kind of a, you know, advisory committees. We don't even know what it's going to look like yet. But right now we have nothing. I propose something that would include people that have been asking for inclusion for years. So right now we have nothing. And I, I, I find it quite astonishing that after 10 years of being on this board, people have been waiting for their five minutes to speak. Now they possibly have a seat at the table for committees that they, they've come to the meetings. They're, in, they're, they're included. They're included in their, their mind that they want to be part of these committees. So let's give them an opportunity. Let's see how it works. That was my point, Mr. President. Give them all an opportunity. Well, if you can't open it up to 50 people on a committee. That's not going to work. You have 72, and getting 72 people in a room is hard enough. But well, more likely than not, if you did open it up, you wouldn't have 72 people. You, you never have, know. People you would know. show up who really have an interest and who really want to well, be a part great. of Well, that's great. Maybe the, the the part of the committee could be five or ten minutes of open time. We don't know. Okay, thank you. We don't you. know how that's going to work. Item 8.3, resolution to amend the list of Board of Education meetings for the 2023-24 school year. I actually wasn't aware of this until it popped up on the agenda. Uh, can you please explain uh, the purpose for changing the meeting in June of 2024? So the purpose for changing was that on the Tuesday that we normally do our meetings is the day of the high school graduation. So that's the conflict, and we wanted to get ahead of it early on so that everyone would know why. Can I have a, I forgot to do a motion. Uh, okay, any discussion on this item? Roll call. Mr. DeRay? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mr. Schradiron? Yes. Ms. Bollet? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Item 8.4, resolution to rescind resolution number 9.6, the purchase of security films district-wide. Uh, can I have a motion and a second? So moved. Oh. Second. Any questions on this item? Mr. Levenstein. Thank you, Mr. President. So. Um, Mr. Bergarelli asked some pertinent questions that we received an email today, including a, a photo of how this film works um, and how it protects the people that are inside the window from sight uh, outside. So it was, it, was, it was very important, and the questions that he asked was very good. So the, I, I just have one, one question, or two questions, I'm sorry. One is... What does it look like from the inside? Is there any obstruction of view? Does anyone know if there's any obstruction of view? There's not. It's clear from the inside out. Okay, so that's number one. And number two is, what is the recommendation from central office for this? Should we rescind this approved um, safety feature for our buildings? Well, I really think that it would be um, silly to rescind this resolution because this is a protective measure 
Um, and the most important role that I have in the district is this, to provide a safe and secure learning environment. This um, resolution was in the last school year. We've provided extensive reporting on it, so I am a little concerned why we would want to remove a safety feature because that would put make the district really vulnerable, and so I'm really perplexed as to why this, this continues to be brought forward. Mr. Lamar and oh, Mr. Shaw. Um, my question is this. Has the district entered into contract? The district did issue a PO based on the June approval by the board. Materials have been procured, so we do have a financial liability at this time. I have a motion down order. Mr. Lamar. I, I had two concerns. One I don't expect an answer on, and the other is really more of a statement. Uh, the, the question I had that I, I actually spoke to Mr. Bergerelli about was that I watched a video on the site, on the Glass Energy website. That's the who we've contracted with or who we're working with. They had a video on it. The product, don't get me wrong, it looks phenomenal for what we're talking about. It does. I am concerned about it being on the ground floor doors, though, because, and windows, because the video they showed, the vi it, you know why? Because now you're giving information about where our, what our security is. So this is part of the vulnerability that I requested we do not discuss in public. I believe that was already addressed in public. No, no, I did not. I refuse to address it in public because I know how important it is for a safe and supportive learning environment. I would never do that. I do apologize for that. My concern is that this stuff was so effective. There were, it, there were videos of people trying to get through with, it, it was very effective, okay? My concern is, well, I will ask you about this later. Let me make my other statement, but so on a financial, uh, from the financial standpoint, I have asked repeatedly why we move positions that were paid for out of the general fund into the COVID funds. And then we created other positions far away from the classroom with those monies. It has everything to do with it because this, the, f the money we're spending on this film could have been used to pay for salaries this money we're spending, on, or maybe this film could have been paid for out of ARP funds. Was that, was that? I have a question on, on the materials that were put in place. The material breakdown, it's saying that the, the labor cost, removal of the existing film on those windows. The windows that were put in place, or maybe, you know, maybe someone in the buildings and grounds would know, that those windows, the, the film is embedded within the window itself. How are they gonna remove the existing film to put the new film on? And we went through some of that a little bit, Mr. Lamar. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turretto. The film that we're talking about to remove is during the energy contract. So, no. During the energy contract, they put the sun shade to prevent the sun to come into the building. You cannot put a film on top of a film. That's on the outside of the window that's gonna be removed and we're gonna install this new film. So it's not the one that is embedded between glass. This is a, pay, a plastic film that was installed during the energy performance contract. And that film is on the outside or the inside of the windows? Some of the school is inside, the windows in the NFA, in the... Uh, no, no, he's talking about the, the existing I'm talking solar about the, film. The solar film is on the outside. I'm talking about solar film. The product that we got the videos for the shows a um, privacy but the specs that we were given about a week before the vote was clear. Is the film privacy or is it clear? Do you want to respond? 
I believe that a picture was shared with you showing what the film would look like. Because the picture that was shown says safety and security film, but the specs were for, and the, and the order was for security film, which is two different products. My concern is we have $650,000 in expense using COVID money. Knowing the financial crisis that's going to be hitting this district that has been explained at the last budget and we as a board that we know is going to happen, I believe it is prudent for the district to save this money for and expend it on things that we're going to be spending for next year or during this year. So that's just my point of view. Thank you. Mr. Howard. Thank you, Mr. President. Please, I'm trying to remain professional, but I need you to be professional too. My hand has been up for five minutes, and you went around me four times, you unless you can't see the side of the room. No, you spoke on this issue. Everyone else gets to speak. I didn't speak on this issue yet. My hand's been up for five minutes, Darren. I thought you spoke on this issue before. I'm sorry. Okay, so I don't understand why we're having such a sensitive conversation about safety in public like this, number one. Number two, these windows are for the safety of our students, of our teachers, of our support staff that are working in buildings. And in light of what's going on around this country right now with these gun laws, with people are just going berserk and doing things crazy, I'm not comfortable not going forward with this safety glass knowing what it can do and what it will save, what the safety issues are, and leave our buildings, our students, teachers, and support staff in peril. I, we had this conversation when we voted on this with the last administration, and we talked about that. We had the conversation. We talked about the importance of it. We talked about the safety issue of it. Why are we revisiting this now? I don't understand. I really don't. Because the safety of our children is for. Is, is foremost important to me. It really is. And when we talk about paying salaries and other things that we could have done with the money, yes, those things could be done, but this is a safety issue we're talking about. And if you're living in the same world I'm living in right now, things are going berserk around this place. And we don't want, we want to stop a safety program or a safety feature that we're putting in to protect our kids, students, teachers, and support staff for this conversation. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm very disturbed by it. Any other questions? Roll call. Mr. Howard? No. We're voting on the rescission of the item. Okay. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? No. Ms. Paletti? No. Mrs. Stradiron? Yes. Ms. Belay? Mr. Bergarelli? No. Mr. DeRay? No. Ms. Green? No. Did not. That concludes my items. Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Mr. McLemore? Thank you, Mr. President. On the human resources agenda, I have items 9.1 through 9.17 for your consideration on tonight. Would anybody like to separate any of these items? I have a, a question about 9.2. Um, so would you like to separate 9.2? Yes, I have a question about okay. that. Um, okay. um, you can speak into the microphone. I'm sorry, it's also 9.2. Any other? 9.17. 9.17. 9 Any other separations? Can I have a motion for items? 9.1 through 9.16 minus 9.2. So moved. 
Second. Any questions on those items? Roll call. Ms. Bolay? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Mr. Duray? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mr. Schrader? Yes. Item 9.2, can I have a motion and a second? Second. Questions on this item? Ms. Green? Yes, I have a question. Um, maybe it was said at the last meeting that I missed, but I don't know about a house principal at NFA Midtown Campus. Um, that, I'm confused about that. So we're moving the Midtown Campus. We shared that in a previous weekly. Um, we're moving it into our um, mostly main, but we wanted to ensure that the program stayed intact. After meeting with the students and the families and the staff, it was imperative to all those involved to keep the program intact to ensure that the students had support. One of the main reasons of moving the program into the larger high schools was to give the students access to programs, to opportunities to make sure that they did not feel excluded. So we wanted to ensure that they had the same levels of support to be successful, and they asked for that when we met with them. Okay, so this is um, like the concept of like a, from the city, like they have a building, but they have several schools within it, and this particular one needs its own principal. Correct. Okay, out of curiosity, how many students are in this particular program? If I mean, I don't need the exact number, but a rough idea. Someone's talking over here. I'll wait for her to finish, the vice president. Huh? Oh, she was. Oh, she was speaking. I couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. Um, if I could get a, a round base number about how many students are in this program, I mean, I don't need like the exact number, but average, how many kids are in this program? So currently, we have about forty students that will be in the program. Though we are continuing to meet with the NFA staff administration to look at whether additional students might enter the program. It's built to expand if necessary. Okay, thank you. Mr. Howard. Thank you. So, uh, Dr. Campbell, will the focus still be on these children getting credit recovery and, and making sure that they have an opportunity to get across the academy field? Will that focus still be there on, those, on, 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 on the scholars? Absolutely. And what we did was we met with each individual student and we created a um, sort of like a student success program. Mr. Bayer can add more information, but essentially we looked at every single student and designed a profile with some input looking at the academic plan and program to ensure that they were most successful in the program that they elicited. Oh, Mr. Bayer. Yeah, that, that process started last year and one of the big takeaways was students wanted access to CTE programs for example that were they were excluded from by, by being in the Midtown campus so we've since met with every, all the students um, we had an informational session with the parents and the students about I'm losing track of time when it was over a week ago um, we had a good turnout we had over, over a dozen students and about 20 parents Mr. Gray who was the school counselor who's assigned to the, the Midtown students has been meeting with them as well uh, Ms. Orwick and Mr. Gray, among others, have been sitting individually with every student to customize their program and to lay out what their course of study will be. The one last thing I want to say, Mr. Howard, is that currently there are 13 juniors and nine seniors that are in this program. We have students who got between two and a half and six and a half credits out of the Midtown experience. Um, and we have many students that we're very excited about that will graduate. So we have everything laid out to make sure that we continue that. There will be both course uh, credit recovery and credit accrual based on the courses the students have taken up to this point. Yeah, so I, I would just like to say I think this was a great move, and, and this is a perfect example. A lot of times we do things, and sometimes we make mistakes. I'm going to call it mistakes. I, I don't think we should have ever been in in, same, in our Sacred Heart, the makeup of that building, but I think we, we got it right this time. And I know Mr. Stridon, when he went over to uh, Sacred Heart, with some of the things he came back with, some of the complaints from the students and teachers over there, I think moving them into a main building is going to address those problems. But bigger than that, I think it's going to give those 40 students a feeling of belonging. And, and I, I want to 
commend you for making that decision, making that move, and I just hope that we can support it and really get those kids across the academy field and let them know that we do have care, we care about them, we love them, and that we want them to be successful. So thank you very much. Mr. Lamar. Will we still see the, the numbers from uh, Midtown um, separate from the other NFA, or will this be absorbed in, will this actually be uh, data-wise being absorbed into NFA Maine? So just the way Infinite Campus is set up, they have to be assigned to a calendar, so they're going to be NFA Maine students, though we have customized their program to ensure that they have the staff that loved on them, as they told us, um, from NFA Midtown to be part of their experience in Maine. So there's some opportunities for them to be included, and there's also opportunities for them to have the teachers that they had in Midtown. Um, but they are, they are going to be listed, in NFA, and they asked for that. They wanted to be... Maine student, and just so you know, all the students are going to Maine, with a few exceptions of students, maybe two or three, they're going to the night school. Um, but that's just how it's going to be laid out. So they wanted it to be subtle. They did not want this target on them, um, that they were perceived in a certain way when they got to Menifee, Maine. But we will be able to track the progress of the program. <laughs> yeah, we, we're keeping very close tabs of these, of these folks. So, j just for clarification, so... Maybe I had it, I was thinking wrong, but when, when, when the students were put into Midtown, they didn't remain on the building of record where they came from. So there was a second, there was a separate uh, BEDS code. Not, it's one BEDS code, but when they came out of their original building, did they remain on that school's record or did they have, a, you have something separate for Midtown? And now... Is that going to be absorbed back into their to their school of record, or is it something different? I, am I asking that correctly? You want it again? So, it, within the student information system, students have to be assigned to a calendar. So, those students that were at uh, the Midtown campus were on the Midtown calendar. So, we'll be able to track and and um, I hate. To I dislike the word track. We'll be able to monitor that group of students. Um, so if we would need to see how their progress is. Um, a part of them meeting with uh, Mr. Bear, Mr. Ms. Orwick, and Mr. Gray was to look at those academic profiles and then plan for them. So we'll be able to still monitor them and, and support them. So it's going to remain the same? It's going to remain... Thank you. I think that was Mr. Lamar's question, so I hope that answered it. Ms. Okay. Boulay? So a meeting or so ago, roughly, I remember voting on a resolution to extend the lease at that building for a, a year. I'm doing this from memory. Maybe $5,000 a month we're going to pay for this year when, when the students won't be there. What are we going to use the building for? So we're exploring different opportunities for the building. We have lots of programs that we're hoping to bring back. We um, have a number of programs that we're looking into. So we do have use for the building because we have programs outside that we'd like to bring back. We'll share that with the Board of Education once we finalize the best utilization for the building. You're welcome. Mr. Levenstein. So just, just to clarify, there's, there's different things you may follow with students, and it might be attendance, it might be grades, it might be graduation. So I, I'm just wondering, I, I don't think all of it can be completely separate, separated out. Um, so one of the questions deals with if, are these students, are, is our hope that they leave this program to enter regular NFA Maine, or are we uh, planning on always having that? And, and that's their, their, in their best interest to stay in that program. So as Ms. Green described what a, a, a school within a school looks like, there's opportunities for these very specific identifiable programs that are specific to what these students need. Those will look very similar to how they had it, and largely that's the staff that they felt they were very committed to. 
but with any school within a school concept, it's a shared experience. So there's always going to be opportunities to step outside that system um, and get it. So in New York City, tip for tip, sometimes like gym is an, a common experience. You may have to share that with the other schools that might be in the building. You know, New York City has sometimes four or five within a building. So there's shared um, experiences that students have, and there's things very specific to how that school is designed. Yeah, and just building on what we heard from Mr. Bear, uh, also remember that we're using uh, ARP funds for this, and ARP funds were targeted specifically to close uh, any of the gaps or address any of the regression from COVID. Uh, so that was the intention of when we built this school, understanding that after those funds uh, kind of ran out, that they would transition back into Newburgh Free Academy, either Maine, North, or West, and be successful. This was, this was catching them up, getting them confident, letting them know we care so that they could be integrated back into the mainstream environment. And I think we started to see some success with it. So it's just moving the building, building it within the building so it's gonna be an easier transition for them back into a mainstream environment because they're already gonna be there in a location. Mr. Lamar, Ms. Green. But the intention will be even uh, that moving forward, this will remain a, a track that they can follow? So a strategy. So we'll make sure that we're looking at student data and if there are students who meet those same requirements, then we will take a look at and, and just keep building out. Ms. Green? I have just one more question. Um, after saying there's 40 students and hearing the information that they're gonna be part of Maine, why are we getting um, a principal for 40 students if they already have administrators in the building, I'm just saying uh, 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 to pay a salary for a principal for 40 students that when they have administrators there. So I'm curious about that. So his, that salary is also part of the ARP funding as well as part of the success of the program that was having a dedicated administrator for the students. So uh, in addition to the courses, there are separate um, portions of the day that there there is different activities that administ that 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 administrator will have to monitor. So it's a different outside of the box type of administrative setup. It's not a true administrative setup that you know it's only these forty kids and this is all that this person will have to do. There are other activities outside of that that person will have to do, as well as that population of students we want to handle with care, right? So it's not. 40 students, high school students, who are traditional high school students, these students may require some different level of support and experience, and so having that special administrative support will continue to nurture them along the way, and they requested to have that person in place. Okay, so it's, they're gonna be like post-work and everything going into this one administrator, but I'm assuming they don't have like a- Mike. Mike. So the principal is going to be like social work and everything rolled into one because do they have their own guidance counselor and everything else? I'm just trying to get all this together. So there is a guidance counselor. He was part of the program. He's also ARP funded. We have to tell you that the students were, um, they advocated to keep their teachers and support staff in place because they credited them to their success and they felt as if those people were integral to their success. Um, so that school, we do not have a social worker. We did in the beginning, so that's a piece of the program we did remove. So that position um, for that program will not be filled. The guidance counselor will support the students in, in both capacities. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Howard. Yeah, uh, so I just want to add, so I hope we're really committed for this because that's a very vulnerable population. And... I think it's, it's important that we do have the principal. I, I also think that it's important that we don't forget that we need a special SEL portion to deal with the, them, them youngsters. And uh, we got to realize and understand why we, those kids were at Midtown. Some of those kids weren't coming to school before. Some of those kids had really given up. And I, we really... We have a change of location, but I hope we don't have a change of attitude. I think that we need to understand it's so, so important 
to understand the vulnerability of that population. And, and if we do it right, it can work. It can really work, but we have to have fidelity and we have to be intentful and we have to be purposeful in understanding what they need to be successful and make sure we give it to them. So I think um, that was the reason to ensure that there was the support of the administrator because it's not a traditional administrative position. That person will be um, with those students, um, not only you know in the hallway ushering, but uh, ensuring that they have everything that they need as an administrator because it's not a traditional school. And they requested, they wanted to be with the same teachers, and the teachers wanted to be with them because they saw the success in the program as well. Um, so they you know, equally wanted to keep the program intact, but welcome the opportunity to be part of the larger program so they can have access to opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Are, are the teachers that were at the Midtown campus, are all those teachers moving to Maine? And where, where are you gonna have the room to have these classes because the the creation of Midtown was a small learning environment so you had you may have had 10 or 12 kids in a classroom so you so you had maybe four or five classrooms do you have four or five classrooms and all the teachers are moving into Maine so Mr. Bayer will finish this statement, but we were very intentional. We um, had a very inclusive process in terms of identifying spaces for the students, um, so much so that we wanted to also have an advisory space to keep the program intact because that was one of the benefits when it was at um, the Midtown campus. So Mr. Bayer, Ms. Orwick, and several members of this administrative team has met with um, the high school administrative staff, both co-principals, and have walked, identified, and the building principals have been gracious enough to move um, classes around to accommodate the space to keep the students in um, a location where they felt supported. I'll have Mr. Bayer add anything else today. I think you said it well. We were very strategic. To honor the students, they, they didn't want to really be in places that were very conspicuous, and I, we respected that. So we were able to work with Ms. Valentino. Uh, Mr. Dada was part of that conversation as well. And we were able to identify uh, some classrooms that were underutilized, rearranged. They were very, very accommodating. I'll tell you that the high school administration has been amazing. We've been meeting for hours and hours to try to get this right. Um, and we've really taken, I will give the kids a lot of credit when they sat here that day. We put them into a group to give feedback as to the model. They were highly active. You would have been very proud of them. And they laid up on, on a number of poster boards what they wanted and what they didn't want. Um, one of the things they didn't want was to be singled out, but they understood that, the, as they described, the pouring in of adults into their lives and that they had that identified uh, uh, trusted adult uh, was really important to them. But the, the building has been accommodated. We have strategic spaces in the building where they'll be, for the most part, though they will be accommodated into a larger uh, structure at times. So the building was great to work with us. I just want to make sure that these students are not going to be in a, a cafeteria or something like that, because I think that would be a disservice to the students to be put into non-classroom spaces, uh, almost like dumped into an area. I, you know, they, they, just, they had their individual spaces at uh, Midtown campus and the small learning environment. Now they're going to be back in the big school with a lot of students, and I'm hopefully it's real classroom spaces. Yes, we have classroom spaces identified. We agree with you. We don't want to lump them in so they feel that they, you know, they're back in the fold and, you know, we're not paying attention to them. So we were very um, strategic and very careful in how we plan this. So thank you for that, Mr. Levenstein. Thank you, Mr. President. So I, I want to make a comparison to PTEC that kind of started in the same way. And Ms. Fuchek is here, and, and she was on the board, and I was on the board. I don't know if Mr. Howard was then when they first approached us with that idea. And basically, we, we followed the, the Brooklyn model, the first school that was at PTEC, and the kids went there because they loved their principal, and they would do anything they they were asked to because of that relationship they had with the principal. And at that point, 
P-TECH was, was just starting out and everybody was funding it. IBM was throwing money. The state was throwing money. We had a year of planning where you can hire a principal and make the, the plan. So my point is you're right that the planning needs to be precise and, and go forward. And we had a staff that was dedicated to those students. We had a principal who went to those kids' houses in the summer and talked to the families and said, you have to, um, you, the family has to be on board. There's no going on vacation in the summer because we're having classes in the summer. But anyway, it was, it was the original start of the program that grew, and I think by 20, lots of 25 originally. And you're right that the planning and the people and the space is, is what makes it happen to these group of kids. Thank you. Any more questions? Roll call. Ms. Boulay? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Mr. Duray? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mrs. Trader? Yes. I believe it's item 917. Thank you. Can I have a motion and a second? Any questions on this item? Mr. Lamar. I just want to know, um, will this uh, substitute be serving as a substitute in a, uh, as a building administrator, or is this a central office um, substitute? She'll be added to the list that all the others are. She would be added to the list that all the other substitutes are. And that's for building administrators? Building District. and, and District. any absence of administration. Okay. Because that was the other question I had. Do we have, there are substitutes that cover for central office when there's someone on vacation or sick? There, there are, it would depend upon the specific time. Um, if you're referring to, um, if both individuals from human resources are out, do we bring somebody in to address human resources? Yes, and we have, and it's been Ms. Limer. Um, super, uh, supervisors and directors, do we bring in a sub? It depends upon the cycle of work that we're in. If it's in an assessment time, we're gonna bring in a sub because we have to get the assessments done. It would definitely be dependent upon the workflow at that particular time when we talk about that. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Mr. Duray? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mrs. Stradiron? Yes. Ms. Bolle? Yes. Mr. President, I'd like to, permission to add an item. Uh, yes, please read the item. Be it resolved that employee number 0831 shall be suspended with pay during the pendency of said Section 3020A Education Law Proceedings. Can I have a motion and a second to add this item? So moved. Second. second. Roll call to add. Mr. DeRay? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mr. Stradiron? Yes. Ms. Bollet? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Now that the item has been added, can I have a motion and a second? Second. Any discussion on this item? Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mr. Stradiron? Yes. Ms. Bollet? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Mr. Duray? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. That concludes my items. Thank you, Mr. McElmore. Uh, Assistant Superintendent of Finance, Ms. Roaring? Thank you. The Finance Division presents items 10.1 to 10.3 this evening. Would any member like to separate any items? Can I have a motion and a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mr. Stradiron? Yes. Ms. Bollet? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Mr. Duray? Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Thank you. That concludes my items. Thank you, Ms. Roaring. 
Item uh, 12, Assistant Superintendent of Exceptional Learners, Mr. Baer. You skipped. Uh, I skipped? Mm -hmm. I see an 11. Oh, 11. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's on double sided. <laughs> Thank you. Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum Instruction, Secondary. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have two items for you this evening 11.1 and 11.2. Would anybody would like to separate an item? Mr. Levenstein. 11.2. Okay, so we will vote on these separately. 11.1, uh, can I have a motion and a second? So moved. Uh, any questions on this item? Roll call. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mrs. Schradiron? Yes. Ms. Follet? Yes. Mr. Borgarelli? Yes. Mr. Duray? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Item 11.2, can I have a motion and a second? Second. Any questions on this item? Mr. Levenstein. Thank you, Mr. President. So I, I was just trying to understand the logistics of, of putting a program like this in the high school where there's um, 3,000 students that are in, in one room for 44 minutes and, and somehow possess their phones and then give it back to them and, and, and how that, that might be possible, but I, I don't understand that. Um, the movement of the phones does not occur on a period-to-period -period basis. It occurs in the morning and it occurs, occurs at the end of the day. So you're saying that you're going to take a high schooler's phone when they come in the building and lock it up and give it back to them at the end of the day? We have two um, staff members present this evening um, with the superintendent's permission. Um, these are two staff members who have experience with the yonder pouches, one in a six through eight setting and one at a smaller NFA campus. Uh, Mr. Prokosh and Ms. Valentino unfortunately had personal engagements and weren't able to be here this evening. We also have a pouch for you to see um, with the superintendent's permission and the board member's permission. May um, our administrators address some of these questions? Yeah, please come to the uh, Thank podium, you. please. Thank you for your permission to Thank do you. that. Oh, yeah. Sorry, my name is Ebony Clark. I work at Newburgh Free Academy West Campus and we have had <coughs> yonder pouches for the last five years. Um, we receive yonder pouches after one of my ELA teachers wrote to the Kevin Hart Foundation and asked how yonder worked. Kevin Hart, some of you may know, is a uh, world renowned comedian and in his show, when you go to his shows, you get a yonder pouch and you place your phone inside the pouch. The idea, and you lock the pouch back. The idea is that you then get to carry your, your phone with you, because it's your property. But you're not allowed to use your phone, as you can see, it's in a pouch. Uh, the former superintendent and I decided to implement it and pilot it at NFA West before bringing it to the larger district to see if it worked. Uh, fortunately for me, uh, I got to use it for the first year, and it was absolutely amazing. And then the second year, we went on COVID, and we kept yonder. Mm -hmm. um, this past year, <coughs> I was at Temple Hill. I had the pleasure of being at Temple Hill in March. Temple Hill started in September of last year using yonder. That was paid for by their PTO to try it. They used it, and I can tell you it is amazing. Every single six through eight kid got off a bus. They took their pouches out while they waited in line to go through security. They put their phones in a pouch and it was over. What we have for you tonight is data 
that can speak to the teachers at Temple Hill who surveyed them to talk about the levels of engagement, the levels of academic achievement, and the discipline levels that went down after using Yonder. What I will show you is that the kids love this part, so when they're done for the day, this is put on a wall outside as they're going to their bus. And they bang it on the wall, they love that part. <laughs> and it becomes unlocked. What's not to love? <laughs> and then they go home, and now they have their phone. At Temple Hill, they keep their yonder pouches. At NFA West, we collect our yonder pouches. Because we only had 120 of them, we wanted to keep them. Um, but that's just one way the high, a smaller high school does it, and then a larger 68 building does it. Um, once they put it in there when they're in school, they cannot go to try to use it. So even if it rings, they still can't do anything with it because they can only open it once it hits that. Correct. Wow. So at NFA West, my advisors each have one of these because you check in with your advisor on your way out, so you unlock it. At Temple Hill, <coughs> we strategically place them in the building. There's one outside the building on your way to the bus. Mm -hmm. There's one by the security door where you go through metal detectors. Mm -hmm. There's one in the AP's office and some in the main office. Okay. So they're strategically placed. What I tell parents, a lot of questions are, your kids don't know your phone number, but they can go somewhere that's safe and secure, unlock this pouch, get their phone number, and then call you from a school line. Okay. So at NFA West, we have a line put in the main office that is just for student use. Ah. So that parents could feel comfortable reaching their child because that is going to be a major thing. All parents feel that their kids are always accessible to them. Right, no, I, get, I understand. At Temple Hill, and again, those kids are a little younger, they would come to the main office. They say, I need to call my mom, but I need my number out of my yonder pouch. Someone would give them the unlock, they unlock it, they get the number, and they use the phone that was strategic placed at Temple Hill for mm -hmm. student use. Okay. Mr. Howard. Yes, so what's the turnover rate? So, and I said, ask that. So, children that keep them, how many children lose them? And then, what do, is there a cost for replacement? And are the extra ones available? Because going over a large number like that, they will, there will be some slippage. So, yes, so, um, at Temple Hill, and Mr. Class can speak to this, we did have some that lost them. And let me preface it by saying these are sixth through eighth graders. Their favorite line is, I forgot my pouch. What we did at Temple Hill was we brought calculator holders that we put in the main office. You come into the main office with your phone and you say, I forgot my pouch. The main office gives you a number, number one. They put your phone in the number one spot and then they give you that number. So if you forgot your, your pouch, they collect the phone. What I found in the time that I was at Temple Hill is we probably gave at least 100, maybe 120 additional pouches when a kid said they lost them. Is there a cost? Yes, however, the cost is minimal because in the contract they build in extra pouches because they understand you're gonna lose them. Yeah. Uh, are the pouches shielded so you're not having a bunch of gray bags ringing all over classrooms and stuff? Or like, like, like meaning like a signal can't get through to the phone so you, you still, ring. yeah, you can't have ringing phones and bags everywhere. Okay. Mr. Howard. I said like old. You're calling me and it's in my pouch. So it did ring. Mr. Forge had tested it and it rang in the pouch. So <laughs> it rings, it gets through. Thank you. Oh, we're all done. 
I'm fine. I'm okay. Mine works. Uh-huh. Hello? There you go. Thank you. So that is what we have done at Temple Hill, and that is what we've done at West. And for the year that I was at Temple Hill, the four, five months I was there was successful, and the five years I've had at West, I've never had a parent complain. If anything, parents want the yonder pouch. Um, with permission, I'd like to share the information from the survey with the board president, and he can give out the pouch. Ms. Boulay. I have enough. Yes. Um, question about discipline. I would only imagine, being a former teacher, that the um, not having the cell phones out would lower the incidence of fights. Um, can you prove that? I can. <laughs> yes. So, um, the data that we are sharing with you is from Temple Hill. The data, I do not, I did not bring data from NFA West. That data is widely available to you on safe schools or infinite campus. We have had zero fights at NFA West since having Yonder, and we have had zero fights recorded um, at NFA West since having Yonder. What I can't give you is the data on what happened before because we didn't have a lot of fights to begin with on a small campus. So I don't want it to be that you're not gonna have any fights. I don't wanna mislead you. This is a dis distraction and we're trying to deter it. It doesn't abolish it, it deters it. And it's going to take time to deter. So I don't wanna mislead anyone here. This is a heavy lift for anyone. It's going to take time for our building to make this lift for you to get tangible proof that it works. It's not going to be something I can give you tomorrow. You will be able to talk to your teachers, your administrators, your parents, your students. And I would ask that if you had questions on Yonder, NFA West students would be more than happy to tell you about them. Is it a code of conduct violation if they open up their Yonder pouch during the day to use their phone? It, you can't open it because you need this. You can open it. Wow. So you, then, then you're destroying school property, which is a violation of the code of conduct. Um, there, there's a way to open it yeah, if without imagine, destroying it. Yeah, yeah, without. And I'm sure there's a YouTube video on it, but um, it, yeah. But that is a code of conduct violation. It would be destroying school property. I just wanted to know if there was consequences for opening up so the pouch. So those consequences would be instituted by the school building and by the school administrator. But I can tell you that after my first year, I had kids try to break into them, and then I never had a problem with them. Thank you very much for this presentation. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> um, the administrators um, who requested the Yonder Pouches met numerous times and had extensive conversation. Um, they all recognize that if we go forward with this, that it will be um, require conversation with parents, um, notification, work with our students, and that it will be an implementation that has to be done thoughtfully. Thank you. So this is going to be from grades what to what? Six through 12, uh, both Hill schools, both middle schools, and all of our NFA campuses. And it folds in um, the existing uh, pouches at West and at Temple Hill. Thank you. Mr. Levenstein. So I, I agree with the idea. I agree with the process. I just don't like approving either policies or procedures that I think would be terribly difficult to enforce Dr. Manning Campbell.
district. I can't pull it too far. <laughs> we know that one of our neighboring districts have implemented with a large high school and they've been very successful. Um, so I understand that you may have some concerns or questions, but this wasn't a process that the staff was included in terms of requesting the pouches because they know that it, it is a distraction to student learning as well as we have a recorded um, incidents that end up all over social media, which we do not want. So it has been successful in other high schools um, close to us, um, large high schools, and so we know that it works. Thank you. Mr. Bergarelli and Mr. Lamar. Every student has a homeroom, correct? Uh, they go to a homeroom at different times. It right. depends on the schedule. Right. It depends. Okay. It's not a traditional, like, first one room. I, I think it would make sense to not delay them getting into the building. Maybe the first period class, there could be the pouches there, and then they get collected. I don't know. Something better than just keeping them waiting in line. Right. No, no. Right. You know, we're exploring, so those okay. are good recommendations. Uh, any other questions? And then we'll take a roll call. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mrs. Stradaye? Yes. Ms. Bollet? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Mr. Jure? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? No. That concludes my items, and thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Dr. Farrell. Uh, now we get to item 12, Assistant Superintendent of Exceptional Learners, Mr. Baer. Thank you, Mr. President. The Exceptional Learner Division has one item 12.1 for the board's consideration. Can I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Uh, any questions on this item? Roll call. Ms. Bollet? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Mr. Duray? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mr. Stradion? Yes. That concludes my items. Executive session, right? We finished our items. We finished. There was the um, one item. There was the. Um, Thank <laughs> you. 
We're going to executive session to discuss the um, case of Almodovar versus Dr. Manning Campbell in New Newburgh and Large City School District. Uh, we will not be taking any action after this item. Can I have a motion and a second, please? Roll call. Mr. Howard? No. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? No. What are we going to do? Go to executive session. Go to executive What item? Ms. Paletti? No. Mr. Schradian? Yes. Ms. Bollet? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? No. Mr. Duray? No. Ms. Green? Didn't pass. Okay. A motion to close this meeting. Second. Roll call, please. Ms. Belay? Yes. Mr. Bergarelli? Yes. Mr. Duray? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paletti? Yes. Mr. Straight Iron? Yes.